The topic is the term yoga and how it's used with reference to Himalayan art. Well, yoga is a very, very common word. We find it uh, in many different uh, applications, many different uses uh, of art, because it primarily relates to Buddhism and to Vajrayana Buddhism in particular. So we can say that uh, the term yoga, we do find it uh, with reference in some cases, not very many, but with some cases to appearance. And, and the appearance, of course, is referring to Milarepa. Uh, Milarepa wears a, a white cotton uh, uh, garment, and many of his students did as well. And even up until recent times, you could find yogis in Tibet who wore this white cotton garment. But the, the the definition of a yoga appearance isn't uh, doesn't necessarily just mean this white um, cotton robe. Uh, it just means a very very uh, simple kind of appearance without jewelry, without any kind of headgear, without robes uh, such as monastic robes. A uh, yoga appearance is referring to something very simple that you would find with Milarepa, with Re Chungpa, uh, with Tong Tong Gyalpo. Uh, there's a number of different uh, figures over the last thousand years who are generally depicted in a very, very simple, uh, non-ornate type of appearance. Okay, so that's yoga appearance, and, and it's, not, it's not really that uh, uh, a big a deal. Uh, what we really have with yoga is we have uh, four topics. Now, the four topics are first uh, uh, deity yoga, Second is Tantra classification, third is miscellaneous yogas, and fourth is abstract yogas. So with the first, deity yoga, the word yoga is used uh, everywhere in, in Vajrayana Buddhism, just everywhere. So deity yoga is the main meditation practice of Vajrayana Buddhism, and it has two parts. It has generation stage yoga and perfection stage yoga. Uh, and uh, how we understand these uh, a little bit more thoroughly is through Tantra classification. But under deity yoga, we should also mention that there's two um, famous deities that have yoga in the name, and that's Vajra Yogini and then Yogambara. Now, the uh, uh, in in terms of the of uh, a male and female. Uh, we're talking about yoga, uh, but in terms of a practitioner of yoga, uh, a male would be a yogi and a female would be a yogini. This is how it is usually um, written in the Buddhist texts. Now, for the second Tantra classifications, we, we have uh, several Tantra classifications that are referred to as yoga. Um, the first is the, out of the, the four classification system, we have uh, four different uh, levels of uh, Tantra, and, and this is how you catalog and divide up Tantric literature into these four different classifications. So we have the first uh, and the lowest is Kriya, second is Charya, third is Yoga, and the fourth is can be called Highest Yoga, or Anuttara Yoga. Um, so for the third category, it is called Yoga Tantra. Then, for the fourth, it also is called Highest Yoga Tantra. And within the Highest Yoga Tantra, we have two or three different subclassifications. We have, we have uh, Method, Wisdom, and Non-Dual. And the Wisdom is sometimes called Mother Tantra or also Yogini Tantra. So within the Tantra classification system, we have Yoga Tantra, Yogini Tantra, and then Highest Yoga Tantra. So we have a lot of uses of the term yoga there. Then for miscellaneous yogas, there's almost no end to these because the term yoga can be used in so many different ways in Buddhism. So, and and not all of the different ways appear in art. Only some of them do. But just to go through uh, a few, we have dream yoga, uh, karma yoga, uh, rainbow body yoga, rasayana and eating yoga, uh, 
uh, yoga of transference, and then uh, yantra yoga. Yantra yoga, of course, is the physical, more aggressive physical yoga, a little more aggressive than the hatha yoga of, uh, of Hinduism. So we have many different ways that the term yoga can be applied to different practices and different ways that it can actually appear in paintings and art. Now the fourth, in terms of uh, 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 different topics of yoga within within art, and we have abstract yogas. Now the abstract yogas are, are really not fundamentally to do with art, but but they're about different Buddhist teachings. So uh, we have two that can appear in art, one more than the other, and that's the 11 yogas of Vajrayogini and then the 10 yogas of Hevajra. And that, there are others, but they're, they're uh, more difficult to spot in the art. But the 11 yogas of Vajrayogini are dealing with 11 types of deity yoga, and the 11, the 11 yogas are sometimes sometimes represented in in painting as these sort of uh, very small uh, uh, vignettes that encapsulate the meaning of that uh, teaching and the deity yoga visualizations that go along with it. So this is very quickly just the different ways that yoga can appear uh, under these four yoga topics uh, in, um, in Himalayan art.